and welcome to the Shiny Bees podcast. A podcast for those who like their knitting, comedy and yarn in equally large measures. I'm your host Joan Milman and this is episode 48, Harlem Wool Festival. I feel a need to laugh again with you if that's all right. Hello everybody and welcome to the show. Today is Tuesday the 26th of May 2015. How are you all? I hope you're all well. I hope you've all been good since the last time I spoke to you which was only a few short days ago um, last week and thank you to everybody who has been in touch since the last episode. It's, um, it's great to hear from you as always. Thank you for the commiserations on Sammy's unfortunate uh, calamitous nature. He's completely fine. I'm completely fine. I got to eat the curry. It was still hot. There was a little bit of scrapping, a little bit of scrapping over the yogurt dip, but otherwise um, it was completely fine. Today's show is going to be a little bit of a departure from the usual format. There won't be necessarily set segments. This time it's just going to be a, a virtual trip to the Highland Wool Festival. It's going to be quite a chilled out episode. I'm making a um, start at swatching something. I never normally knit at the same time that I podcast because I'm generally um, gesticulating wildly whilst I'm telling you the stories and moving my hands around a lot. And um, I don't usually knit, but I understand that other people do. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll do something quite chilled out, give it a try, because that could be a good way of squeezing in some extra knitting time into um, into the working week, if you will. And we'll see how it goes. So I'm just knitting up a sneaky little uh, tension square. So you may, may hear a little bit of swishing of needles, perhaps. Um, and hopefully I can get my uh, headphone cable far enough away such that you can't hear that rattling and uh, yes watching a little bit of nurturing fibers for my long awaited nylon jumper so as i said it is going to be quite a laid back episode quite chill day a bit of a departure from the normal format because i'm in a chill day kind of mood this week um and we'll just uh, go through what i found some people for you to potentially check out what it was like talk about the tray bakes of course very laid back um, before returning to the normal, um, slightly more pacey and rigid structure of the show next week. So, get yourself a nice steaming cup of tea and a bit of cake, preferably tray bake, and we'll crack on with the show. So, as you are all no doubt aware, I went off to a Dingwall at the weekend for the Highland Wool Festival. This took place on the 23rd of May at the Dingwall Auction Mart and Dingwall is just north of Inverness in northern Scotland and it's about an hour and 15 away from from where I stay. Most things are at least an hour away from where I stay in all honesty apart from the beach um, which is why you get a lot of beach photos on Instagram and not a lot of uh, not a lot of uh, landmarks or anything else if you will and I went along with my friend Kay who is Sling Kay on Instagram if you want to follow her she does take her the odd wool picture and um, lots of other pictures as well and um, her mum came along Moira and we went off in the car to Inverness stopping en route well Dingwall stopping en route at Nairn um, and I've spoke about Nairn before because um, that is where the wool shop is, Caledonian Craft Connections or uh, Wool Shop on the Bray as it's also known, uh, which I reviewed a few episodes ago. We didn't go to the wool shop, we stopped off at a supermarket to get pastries essentially to power us through the rest of the journey and also to get some money out of the cash machine because the isn't a cash machine at the auction mart and the nearest one is about five minutes drive away so we decided we might want to stock up on a little bit of money obviously we're not going to spend our money we're going to we're just gonna look just gonna look and um, 
we got some some money out and carried on arriving at the auction mart at about half ten I guess it'd been open from half past nine um until half past four and it is a one day show um due to the restrictions based by the auction mart in that they have an auction on the Friday and it's never opened on a Sunday so the they can only have it for one day if they have it in the auction mart so we parked up and went over to see the wee coo there's a highland coo and um, a fella and a dog up a statue just outside um, the auction mart so you'll have seen that picture probably on instagram i'll put it in the show notes if you're at all interested um for the obligatory photo with that and he he has a little rug on that says highland wool fest and they get a little bit yarn bombed which is uh, good fun and in we went the initial impressions of the auction mart were i was a bit confused because most of the ones i've been to smell of sheep poo when you go in oddly this one doesn't it doesn't smell of anything it doesn't smell of fear or death or sheep poo um it just didn't smell of anything and um you basically go through the cafe area to get to the stalls area where all the stall holders are and um, the first person we came across was Helen at Ripples Crafts. She was the first one, first pen on the left. So it looked a little bit busy so I said hello very briefly to lovely Dorothy of Dorothy Stewart Handwovens and you'll have heard her mentioned on the podcast before. She hand weaves silk scarves from silk that's hand dyed by Helen at Ripples Crafts. Dorothy hand weaves them in her studio into beautiful, beautiful silk scarves in uh, well, she's near Loch Maben, uh, so further south um, in Scotland, towards the southwest of Scotland, as a rough idea. She's not weaving anything at the moment because she's waiting for a new, uh, what's it called? loom a new loom to arrive um that she's ordered and then i think she'll be weaving up a storm she's quite missing it so i had a lovely chat to her and a quick chat to helen because the stall was fairly busy and resolved to come back later and see them then so i carried on up the left hand side looking at some of the stall holders and came across none other than lovely George and Louise of Yarn Garden who were in their new stall layout which if you remember if you've seen them before they used to have the little miniature greenhouses and the little trays with the yarn in um that's been dispensed with now because it's they don't have enough space for all of their yarn anymore in those so instead it's just been turned into one of these sort of these walls of yarn where the skeins are hung on um hooks that come out from from a metal kind of cage I guess or not a whole cage it's not 3d it's flat and then you have the little hooks when you go into shops you normally see things hanging on them and um, a lot of yarn shops seem to have them now and um, that's what they've gone for because it allows them to display a lot more yarn and have more stuff out but they still have their lovely green rug on the floor I neglected to um to throw myself on it this time because it's it's seen a lot of shows since uh, since I'm wine bright and I don't know how how much I want to throw myself on the rug anymore. Um, not that it was particularly dirty, but they do get a lot of traffic at their stall. So I went there and within probably twenty seconds of saying hello, George had already said, "I'm the kind of girl that probably would like to be on a video." <laughs> I was just like, bad. <laughs> and it turned out he wanted to do some kind of random video about a skin of mohair. So obviously, using my amateur dramatic skills to the full extent, the full extent of which is being a pantomime cat, might I add, um, I uh, agreed to be part of the film. And I'm not sure if he's finished editing said film yet. I haven't seen it up, but when I do... I'll review it and think about sharing it with you. Um, if I'd realised I was going to be on a film, I'd have probably made a little bit more effort in the makeup department, to be honest. Um, so we saw them and had a look at all of their lovely yarns and took part in a video. Um, they had some very nice springy Corridale yarn that I was quite partial to. And they also had their Teeswater up um, 
for sale as well, which is um, a lovely yarn from the Teeswater sheep. So that was fun. They're in good form. And then we went onwards to explore the other stalls. Now, one of the things I did say last time was that what I found when I went to the Inverness version of this one, which was the Highland Woolen Textile Fair, was that there were a lot of small producers that you just don't see anywhere else. And obviously I did um, mention that to you guys in the last episode. That's why I, I quite like these shows in particular. So I was quite excited to see what I was going to find. And I have to say I was not disappointed. And I have teed up interviews with some some of these people because I think I think you'll find it really interesting. Um, one of the first ones I went into was looking for the cards because I'm knitting at the same time. You can hear I'm talking slower. I feel like I'm talking slow because I'm knitting. Um, one of the first ones I went into was White Inch Crafts, um, which is run by a lady called Anne Marie and is based over near. Forest near where RAF Kinloss used to be. It's now Kinloss Barracks because the army took it over. And um, this lady keeps her own sheep. They are um, BFL and Shetland Crosses. Um, and I think she's got a few others. And she takes the fleeces and has them processed and spun into their own yarns, which is really cool. All of the fleece comes from her own farm, her own sheep. And it's made into her own yarns. So I was particularly taken, as I say, with the BFL Shetland Cross. That was a lovely creamy colour. Um, but she also had a few other different crosses available um, in yarn form uh, for you to try. It, was, it wasn't a huge amount, maybe uh, five, five to six pounds, I think. I can't remember the exact price. But I remember um, thinking it wasn't a great deal more than you would pay for some equivalent sort of yarn at blacker yarns for instance and um, but obviously this has all come from just the one farm um disappointingly and i find this the case with all of the really exciting tiny producers that i talk to and some of them i will mention in a little while and um, there isn't much of an internet presence there as in you can't buy the yarns online from her um but i am going to go over to see her and I'll see if there's any way that they could be put up there so you can have a look. And um, if you're interested, you could get your little greasy mitts on some of it because it was very, very nice, actually. I was, if I didn't already have a mountain of yarn to knit, I would definitely have have gone in for some of that. But with it being DK, you need a few balls and you don't really want to be plumping in for balls and balls of DK yarn when you don't know what you're going to make. It's, it's one thing buying the odd skein of yarn, knowing that, oh, I'll get I'll get a pair of socks or I'll get a shawl or I'll get a hat or whatever out of it. With DK, you've got to be a little bit more careful because you generally obviously need twice as much because of the yardage. And with DK, you're probably going to be wanting to make a garment. So I thought I would um, have a think about that one and plan out what I was going to make before I made a purchase, which is terribly sensible of me. Terribly sensible. Um, but I was trying to be a good girl. I was trying not to spend all my money. So that was um, White Inch Craft Studio. They do have um, a website, but as I say, you can't um, buy the yarn from that website. But if you are passing, if you're on your holidays, you'll be able to pop in and it is whiteinchcraftstudio.co.uk. I'll put a link in the show notes. They are also on uh facebook so most of the the little guys here are on facebook so you can see them there some of them have got good websites some of them a bit less so um so i carried on went past nakandu wool mill um decided not to go in there and have any accident with any blankets or such like um that they have on offer after my little splurge at edinburgh yarn festival i thought i will save them and come back later and in the end I didn't have enough time to go in but I know I will be going to the to the wool mill in the next few weeks so I'm not too bothered about that 
Um, the next place that I went into was um, a stall that was being manned jointly by Marcassi Farm and I think Simply Natural. Um, it's a farm over near Findhorn and Findhorn is again near um, RAF Kinloss, RAF Kinloss, Kinloss Barracks um, and near Forres and Findhorn Foundation is a kind of quite famous sort of eco-living Commune's probably the wrong word. It's more of a kind of eco community, um, and as a result, around there you get a lot of people who are interested in more sustainable ways of living. Now, this lady um, shares, I think, a workshop on the farm at Marcassi Farm, which is all sort of organic and um, lovely. They've got their own animals, and this lady weaves willow baskets. Um, and they were lovely, lovely willow baskets. You can go and do lessons there. So I think that's probably something we're going to go and do because we were quite interested in that. I've never done basket weaving and I'd be quite interested to try it. Apparently you can go and um, you can go and learn to weave your own coffin. So if you want rather a willow coffin rather than, uh, I don't know, whatever they make it out of, pine, I guess. Um, you can do that. In fact, they had um, like a work experience girl. I say girl, it's probably a bit loose. She was 70 odd and she went to work for them. And then as part of her kind of remuneration for her work experience, she wove her own coffin, which is a bit mobs. Um, my friend's mum was a bit worried that this lady might have pegged it before she finished the coffin but she didn't apparently it only took her a week and in that time she managed not to die which was uh which always good always good and <laughs> the words that english people ask well she's scottish but british people use for dying really make me laugh pegged it is one kicking the bucket is another one and um, it's just our kind of sense of humor i bought some yarn from this stall from Marcassi Farm. We're going to pick it up and bring it towards, give it a little crunch. It's quite crunchy. Listen. Good, isn't it? Um, this is Marcassi Organic Gotland Cross Shetland. I got it in the chunky and this comes in a natural grey colour. All of the yarns came in natural colours from quite light um, sort of your ecru all the way through light grey medium grey dark grey and um, from their own sheep that they keep on the farm the website is again barely functional you can't buy the yarn online um, but it is www.marcassifarm.org and it's m-a-r-c-a-s-s-i-e-f-a-r-m marcassifarm.org i'll put a link in the show notes I'm sure if you email them, they'll be able to do something for you, but you can't just do e-commerce like the rest of the world does with any of these small producers. It's become quite apparent to me. Um, and it's kind of crazy that I spend my life looking at yarn and looking for yarn for TGS and talent hunting and scouting. And there can be all these tiny producers 20 minutes, 30 minutes down the road. I don't even know about them yet. Um, well, we're revolution. <laughs> Welcome to the internet. So we've we've got fibre broadband up here, but they're all too busy looking after their animals, I think, to uh, to get on there properly. So, yeah, they had some really lovely yarns that came in skeins rather than balls, and um, I, I sort of had an accident with one of those. Um, it was twelve pounds, which is quite reasonable, I thought, for one hundred and twenty yards of chunky weight. And I know um, I have patterns from Claire Divine's tea collection that use one skein of chunky yarn. At about that yardage, I thought, well, I'll give the super luxurious baby alpaca a bit of a miss and I'll do something a little bit more rustic with this one. Maybe I might even give the hat to Millie. Um, I think he'll quite like that. He seems to like the sheepy wools. He liked the uh, the black yarns, West Country Tweed, and I think he will like this. And he does suit grey. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, knit that one up and uh, see how it goes. So I'll let you know what I think of the yarn as I knit it. But... Um, very sheepy, very nice, but I think with that Shetland Cross content, when you wash it and wear it, it'll just get better with age. I think it will stand up to quite a bit of wear and tear, which is always um, always good when you're knitting for boys. So that was them. Then I went and nipped around the corner to 
Let me just get... I've got a big pile of leaflets, you see. Let's have a look at the other stuff. Um, there were about four rows of double-sided pens. Um, and as I said, there was quite a bit of different, um, different kinds of producers. So when you go somewhere like an urban knitting festival, it tend, the emphasis tends to be on your yarns, project bags, patterns, soak wash, that sort of thing. When you go to a more rural one, and particularly up here, you tend to get a quite a wide variety of producers. So you'll get people who make stuff, uh, knitted finished objects from the yarns, you get quilters, you get a lot of quilting cottons, you get yarn shops, you get small craft producers like I've just described there. And there's a couple of others that I need to mention as well. Um, jewelry makers, uh, a lot of Harris tweed, um, tweed, wool tweed that's made on the Isle of Harris and then sewn into various different things such as bags and purses and what have you. Uh, some dyeing, fibre stuff, a spinning, you get quite a lot of spinning stuff as well. Um, this one, um, I liked the stuff that she made. It's tartan, uh, but it's not completely over the top. There was, there is one, um, tartan producer that does tartan corsets and tartan um table runners and things that have some nice stuff but it's a bit too tartan for me this um this producer is called tartan at heart and i think it's slightly more accessible tartan for people who are maybe not going to be going to super traditional highland weddings or such like so um she's based in the scottish highlands and she makes jewelry accessories and gifts they're all handmade by her and her name is kerry spears um and it's all made from pure wool tartan that all comes from scottish mills she has a really wide variety of stuff things that stuck out to me where she has some really sweet uh, necklaces with little tiny thistles made out of tartan on them which I thought were quite cute and um, she also had some boxed kind of box framed pictures made out of tartan as well with like tartan flowers or other tartan things she had some really cute key rings and dog um dog name tags but it's pointless it's lost on my dogs because they're so very you can't see the name tags um cushions kind of headbands she also does stuff that is more towards um you know your special occasions if you do need um things for your highland wedding i'd dare uh, say this is a good place uh, to go and there's a really cute little guy with a little tartan dicky bow so sweet so the website for this is www.tartanatheart.co.uk. This one is a lot more swept up in terms of you can actually buy things and sort things out on the internet with that and you can see a lot of the products she's got on offer. But I really like them. I thought they were really good quality as well. Um, So that was hair. We went along to um, Sky Blue Pink. You've probably heard Sky Blue Pink mentioned before because it isn't a maker that is just um, confined to this area. It's a bit more of a kind of more national. You see them at other shows as well. I think they're based down towards St Abbs perhaps or southern, the southern part of Scotland. And um, they had all sorts of lo super lovely weaving, not weaving, spinning. There was weavers as well. I think no, they were just doing spinning on this one. Um, spinning supplies, so they had loads of different colours of fibre and custom fibre blends, which were lovely. Um, and what they also had, which I really liked, was a range of hand-spun yarns, hand-spun breed yarns at that. In different, Some of them were dyes, some of them were natural colours, and it was all hand-spun by the same lady and all available to buy directly from them, which, if you like the idea of hand spun but maybe your skills are not there yet or your time isn't there yet or or whatever else this could be a good way of trying it without having to actually spin the yarn first 
Um, so I'll put a link to their website in the show notes. As I say, you do tend to find them around a bit more um, than some of the other makers that I've mentioned here, as in further south. So I'm sure you will come across them. I think they were at Yarndale last year, if I remember rightly. So that might be a place to find them. But I'll look it up on in um, on their website and let you know if they're going to be there. And I'll put a link in the show notes. So you will be able to go and look at their stuff because I'm pretty sure they do do mail order. Another indie dyer that was there was Natural Born Dyers. They're based in the borders as well. Um, and again, you tend to see them at Yarndale. And they do a range of quite muted colourways. It's all natural dyes done on their farm in the borders. And I went across to another Northumbrian firm. And again, I've mentioned these on the podcast before. This was Whistlebear Yarns. Now, if you remember, I snagged some yarn from Whistlebear Yarns at Edinburgh Yarn Festival because they were there as well. And the yarn is essentially a blend of 60% kid mohair from their own mohair um, goats on the farm and um, 40% Wensleydale from her son's sheep flock. So this yarn is just lovely. It's really shiny. It almost looks like it's got metal in it because of the the fibre content that it has. It's all hand dyed on their yard, on their farm. And if it's quite, because you've got quite a lot of mohair, it's quite a heavy yarn. It's quite fine, but heavy, if that makes sense, because of the fibre content. It's absolutely beautiful. Kay um, bought some of it to make a quadratic shawl. And I have some stash to make um, Lush Mark 15 or whatever one I'll be up to by that point. Um, ready to go. I need to swatch all of that as well so I can get that planned and on the needles, stop mucking about. Um, but hopefully I'll be interviewing um, Alice, who's a lady who owns the farm, at some point in the next couple of weeks so I can share that with you. Cause it's quite an interesting story. They also do workshops, etc. And I think they do holiday cottages too. So if you're looking... Uh, for a little staycation this summer could be could be the way forward really so that is whistlebear yarns i think again you can buy that online their uh, website is reasonably swept up i'm sure you will see them at some other shows because i think they are they're doing a few more shows this year um judging by the calendar so far so that would be quite exciting after that we had to have a rest because we were quite tired so we went to the cafe in the Mart and it is well known, hugely famous for its amaze balls cakes. And uh, we got a nice strong cup of tea and a nice tray bake and sandwiches and had a little review of the things that we'd bought and where we were going to go next. So just a couple more notable vendors for you and I'll wrap up with what I actually bought on the day I was very good I thought really I didn't spend all of my money um which is always always good I think um I was I really very nearly had an accident at Ripples Crafts um but I'll tell you about that towards the end because that was near the end of the day when that nearly happened um another very local uh to me at least um vendor that was there is South Listens Pottery and Silk Art and they are a studio um, between Cullen and Keith um, to the east of Murray so between where I live and Aberdeen. Um, there is a big antiques centre in Cullen or near Cullen and Cullen is uh, quite famous for its soup um, Cullen Skink, which is a kind of creamy smoked haddock potato, um, delicious soup. And um, this is a husband and wife team. The husband makes the pottery and the wife makes, um, her name is Lynn. She makes beautiful um, pictures, photos, not photos, like it's like art really, I guess. <laughs> Um, framed art pictures of um, all sorts of things but very much sort of inspired by the local scenery around here and the sea and beautiful landscapes and they're absolutely lovely I'm definitely going to be popping along to this place um, 
in a couple of weeks. I think when Mealy's back, so I want to go and look at the antique centre as well. So it seems like a good opportunity to do both, I would say. Um, and um, her husband makes pottery. He's been doing it for 20 odd years. And you can go into um, the studio and visit them. And it is on the B9018 between Keith and Cullen. There's um, a wide variety of pottery that he produces, um, jugs, homeware, cups, vases, etc. But he also makes yarn bowls. So I snagged myself a beautiful little yarn bowl. I've never had one before and it just... I've been thinking about it on and off and... I've generally tended towards not getting because um, I have two small children and small children and pottery doesn't tend to mix extremely well at the best of times. But I thought, well, I will just use it at night because I do a lot of manitin at night when I get a chance to knit and um, they're in bed. So I can just keep my, my project in there and keep it up on the shelves with all the other stuff they can't play with. And then... I can have my yarn bowl so I picked a beautiful minty pale green colour which is what definitely one of my colours I wear that colour a lot and um, they came in this pale green wash and a dark blue wash and my friend um, Kay she got one of the blue ones because she was the one who was talking about getting a yarn bowl in the first place and then I ended up getting one as well so <laughs> um, but they were lovely and I felt very keenly priced um, for the quality and the fact they were made locally, they were only fourteen ninety five, um, and I think the larger ones were nineteen ninety five, which I think was really good value. Um, so I was incredibly pleased with that one, and I don't think they have a website. Somewhat unsurprisingly, <laughs> seeing any themes here, um, but you can email them. It's South Listens Pottery at Hotmail .co .uk or Silkart full stop lynn at gmail.com if you're going to come and visit the area on holiday or what have you um it's definitely worth uh, dropping and having a look at and i'm sure they can sort if you want in something they can probably sort you out if you give them a bell that's that's the thing about a lot of these little places up here is yeah they might not be on the internet it might not all be automated but if you ring ring them up they'll generally bend over backwards to help you so um if there's anything that you are interested in that i've talked about um all of the contact details will be in the show notes and just get in touch with them um, and just say, Jo told me on a podcast about you. She saw you at Highland Wool Festival and I want some wool. Can you sort me out? And I'm sure they will. The final one I had was West Coast Textiles. This was a shop um, that was uh, a lot of the tweeds that I mentioned, the Harris tweed um, made into different bags and accessories. It was a shop that made that and I went in because it smelled really strongly of lavender and just snagged myself a little little lavender heart a little grey tweed lavender heart to keep in my um, bedroom yarn collection bowl uh, to keep any nasty moths at bay um, and yeah that's it there were a lot of other um, vendors there and um, obviously I don't have time to mention all of them but the ones that I've mentioned were the ones that definitely stood out to me um, the only one I've not mentioned thus far because it was very quickly at the end and I had to kind of skip in and skip out is um, Wood Park Wool. This is another one of these small producers that I talked about. They do Shetland and Jacob yarns, different blends um, of, of various different breeds. They had a few different breeds available, breed yarns on the stall and they also had um, sheepskins. Uh, and I managed to kind of not pull pull the price tag off one of them when I was petting it. Um, but they do do both of those. Now, um, Kate Davies is a bit of a fan of these guys and um, knitted a garment with some of their wool way back in 2008 and blogged about it. Um, so I will put a link to that as well in the show notes so you can have a read of what she thinks because she gets to see some wool, I would imagine. And... Um, she seemed to think it was it was pretty good. It certainly seemed to knit up nicely, judging by the pictures in her blog post. But they are but they are www.woodparkwool.weebly.com. Again, I will put the link in the show notes. So just go there and you'll be able to click straight through to all of these guys. The um 
again you can't buy it online um automatically but there's all details and uh, contact forms and prices and availability and stuff on their website so it's a bit easier to find what you're after and um, just give them a show and i'm sure they will sort you out so um yeah that's my rundown of um highland wolf festival the only thing that nearly happened was i almost nearly accidentally bought some four ply um and I've sort of banned myself from buying any more at the moment because I'm not deriving much joy from doing so. Um, not that the wools are not beautiful because they are, but I want to knit them all and I, and I don't have time. I've, I've figured out what my problem is um, and I'll come on to that in a minute after uh, getting lots of consolatory emails and lots of try this, try that. I've figured out the problem. But what I almost did was I almost fell face first into a yak trap at uh, at Ripples Crafts. Um, Helen's got a new base called Sullivan 4-ply, which is the 60% merino, 20% silk, 20% yak base. And um, she dyed a lot of semi-solid colourways. And they just looked like a, ba a basket of Christmas all sat together. There was this really beautiful, rich red. There was a, a nice kind of evergreen, sort of green shade. There was a blue, there was a copper. It reminded me of a box of Quality Street, um, always dangerous, and I very, very nearly bought the red one, but I managed to stop myself from doing so. I think she's put all the ones that she had left over on the website, um, so I'll put a link to that in the show notes for you. But having seen it in the fleece, if you will, in the wild, definitely a base to get your hands on and get trying some of this uh, Yak blend. It is, it's lovely, it's a great, it's a really nice, tight, firm spin. Um, really shiny and lustrous looking and very soft but I think it will wear quite nicely because of the tight spin and because the silk does add an element of strength as well so um, certainly one for later in the year for me I think once I've redeemed myself by knitting some more things. Um, thank you to everyone who sent in uh, suggestions of how to make my knitting projects go faster um, including de-stashing, never going to happen don't even suggest it to me. It's not going to happen um, as a conscious decision. I've got rid of some stuff, but I'm not going to go through there and willingly get rid of things that I might knit one day because I do still love most of it. The issue is not the amount of yarn, really. It's the lack of time, I think. And having kind of sat there this week and been so close to the end of my hap for the hap along, and then it gets to the end of the day and it gets to 10 o'clock and I've been working during the evening, been working all day, can't do any knitting while the kids are around because they're crazy and um, the issue is definitely not the lack of capability or indeed the lack of intent it's just a lack of time it's not had time if you don't you're not going to get anything finished if you don't sit down and get your needles out you ain't going to get anything finished and I think that is the issue I don't think it is paralysis of any nature as such it's just that I work for myself and I work at night as well you know it doesn't doesn't really stop it's sort of work 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 all day pick the kids up feed them trying to stop world war three get them in bed grab something quickly to eat and then work for another couple of hours and then it's bedtime um even more so when you sort of single parenting because you know the other millie's away and you still have to do the same amount of work you know it's still the same amount of washing Still the same amount of cooking, still the same amount of cleaning, but there's only one of you to do it. So it does, it takes ages, it takes more time, it takes twice as long as what it would do, because I always end up, I hate cleaning the kitchen. I hate it. I love packing the dishwasher, hate unpacking it. Love putting things in the washer, hate taking them out. Love putting things in the dryer, hate taking them out. Hate folding them, I like folding them up, hate putting it away. Weird, weird. Um, And so, because I don't have my little partner in crime to help me with any of that, because he likes to put everything away. He's quite happy with that stuff. Um, I'm just finding that I just don't have any time to do it. And that is the real issue. So I guess the next question is, is how do you fit in extra little bits of cheeky knitting to your, to your day? How do you make time to knit? Because I can't, I mean, I, I, I work for myself. I can't just come home and go, all right, so I can't be arsed now. Just sit down and put my feet up. Um, and do nothing you know I, I, that 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 doesn't generally happen ever so um, any tips on sneaking extra bits of time in to 
to get the odd row in would be appreciated. Um, but it would be nice to finish some stuff. Then I don't think I would be quite so frustrated. Is this a problem that any of you have? Do you find you don't have quite enough time to do what you want? Do your ambitions far exceed your ability to get stuff done? Um, and if so, do you have any top tips for speeding things up? The odd shortcut or making time to actually get something done? If you do, give me a shout. I would be delighted uh, to hear any recommendations. Well, I think that is all we've got time for. I certainly seem to have uh, found my stride in the talking front whilst knitting at the same time. Don't think I did at the beginning. It's a little bit slow, a little bit slow. <laughs> not quite, not quite there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, time to wrap up for another week. So the only thing that I forgot to mention last week, which is a bit of a boo-boo, was that Claire was doing a giveaway of Hunter Hammerson's book over on her blog. There was a link in the show notes, but I didn't say it in the show. And I know a lot of you listen on the hop when you're doing other stuff or commuting. You don't necessarily um, have the ability to go and Google things straight away. Um, or look at the show notes right away. So um, get on over there if you haven't already and, uh, and enter her giveaway for a copy of Hunter Hammerson's Knitted Curiosity Cabinet, Volume 2. And look out for some exciting news from Claire over the next few weeks because Sock Anatomy has gone to the printers and it's going to be available with nine sizes. She's resized all of the baby socks all the way up to adult socks. So it's definitely, definitely, even more than it was now, a book to get your greasy little mitts on. So I think I better let you all uh, get to it, whether you're riding on a horse through your Danish forest or sat on a, a train to London or maybe on the tube or wherever indeed you are listening uh, today. I hope you all have a lovely week and thank you very much for joining me in this chilled out episode. I'm going to look forward very much to speaking to you all next week when Claire will be returning with the sock surgery and to sharing some exciting interviews with you over the next few episodes. So have a lovely week. Chin chin. Speak to you all again soon. Bye. You've been listening to the Shiny Bees podcast, a podcast for those who like their knitting, comedy and yarn in equally large measures. If you'd like to get in contact with me, you can do so via the blog or I'm Shiny Bees on Ravelry, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest and Facebook. You can email me at shinybeesinfo at gmail.com. Music for this episode is provided via Music Alley and it is Adam and the Walter Boys and I Need a Drink. I need a drink.